Walter Overcord, you're very welcome to the programme where we're coming to you from Balmullet to celebrate the 10th anniversary of Mayo Day. There's lots to come, we'll be talking to some of the entertainers, we'll be heading along to the food village and we'll be seeing what's uh, happening at Orish and Esclora here in the town, so stay tuned. Elaine, a fantastic day here in Balmullet. There's lots of events happening today for Mayo Day. It's 10th birthday as well. That's a huge achievement. Oh, it's massive. And it's such a, a sign of the way the county works that every year it gets bigger and it gets better. And Balmullet is no exception to that. We have the largest craft marquee we've ever had. I mean, if you just look at the numbers on the street as well, there's, there's so many people here today and it's great. The town has really come on and supported us as well. There's flags everywhere, bunting. You know, the shops have come out. It's, it's fantastic. That Mayo pride is alive and well in Balmullet and indeed across the county because there's lots of events taking place for Mayo Day. This is the flagship one. But give us a synopsis really of what's on offer here. Yeah, so we've loads on offer. There's loads of different areas on the go. I mean, if Barrack Street is our craft marquee, um, so we've over 36 craft vendors in there. Uh, down on the docks is the food village. So we have a food demonstration kitchen and a Q&A session in there throughout the day. We have a few more kind of local community health groups down there doing information talks. We have a long way old group uh, down there as well with another marquee. Then up in Carter Square, we have our musicians, which are going all throughout the day from 12 until 6. And then we have classic cars here on Main Street and then up at the Aura's we have the kids area so there's there's a, a crazy amount of stuff going yeah, on something for for everybody in all ages James um, a lot of work goes into this behind the scenes it's not something that just comes together yeah look it, it's uh, I suppose we're, we're, we're nearly a well-oiled machine at this stage this is the 10th year this is my sixth year um, it always brings its challenges but it's it's it can be tough but as it, as it gets closer to the day it actually becomes a bit easier everything falls into place and whenever the, when the hard work is done early the rest kind of looks after itself Well, we're here now in the local arts tent here at Mayo Day in Balmullet. I've met up with Orla McConnon. Orla, thanks for joining us today. You're a local photographer and poet. Tell me a little bit about your story. Lovely, thank you very much. Um, nice to meet you here at this Mayo Day celebration 2024. Um, I love landscape photography. Living in Mayo, it's it's really difficult not to find a beautiful picture. Um, there are just so many landscapes out there from Black Sod, um, where we know some people from the sunrise here in Gisala. And um, it all inspires my writing as well. Yeah, because you have a beautiful book here, a little bit of poetry and yeah. some photography as well. Yeah. Are the poems based on some of the photographs or how does that work? Yeah, they, they do. One inspires the other. I do sort of affirmation writing. Um, it's all about trying to keep positive and finding the beauty around there. So we're joined here by some of the county's youngest entrepreneurs. We'll ask them their names and where they're from. So where are you from? Uh, Dula. And what's your name? Bridget. And what's your name? Tara. And where are you from, Tara? I'm Jubilee. And how did this business come about? So, like, at Christmas, we kind of always knew we wanted to do candles. So we got a little starter kit and we started making them. And soon we started an Instagram page and it really went well. So we just kept doing them. And we've been at lots of markets and places selling them. And it's just been really fun, to be honest. And does it take long, Tara? Uh, Probably an hour and a half maximum. Fantastic. And there's some lovely ones here today because I see Balmullet 200 and Mayo for Sam. Yeah, we today we are doing place names. So you could get Bingham's Town, Black Sod, Balmullet, Mayo for Sam. 
loads of names and we have a notebook here so if there's any name we don't have we'll have them on back order. Neil thanks for joining us here today you have the complete guide to Balmullet and the Mullet Peninsula and you're a tour guide as well tell me all about uh, the things that you do. I'm a tourist guide um, doing walking tours of the town doing walking tours up as far as Eris Head but I'm also a, a chauffeur guide so I will take clients uh, right throughout the west of Ireland down as far as the Cliffs of Moher out to Connemara out to Ackle Island down to Black Sod, of course uh, on, on numerous occasions uh, getting them to visit the wonderful new uh, uh, attraction the wonderful new visitor centre down in Sullis uh, then also uh, out to up to up as far as County Sligo as well where I do, to do Yates County um, You know tourism in Mayo very popular I suppose you're seeing people coming from right around the world Absolutely, although my work really concentrates on people from the United States. So I work with basically top-end people, often people who have links with Ireland, so maybe they have a heritage, maybe their ancestors came from here, and that's a very important element uh, for them. But they're completely charmed by everything about Ireland. They don't worry about the weather. The weather doesn't faze them, believe it or not. Sure, you're going to tell me that the only thing is about bad weather is not the right clothing. Correct. There's no such thing as bad weather, only badly prepared for the weather. Absolutely. Edwin, all set for a very busy day here in Balmullet. You're here with Castle Books. It's been a great year for publications really being uh, produced in Mayo. Absolutely, Tommy. Yeah, there's such a great range of, I suppose, stories from Mayo and such a great range of authors. And we're blessed to have so many of them that have committed their stories and committed their histories to print. Um, and so there's been a wealth of brilliant stories, a wealth of brilliant books that have come out in uh, in the last number of years in Mayo and I can tell that there's uh, I can tell you that there's plenty more in the in the pipeline as well so we're working on some really exciting projects and looking forward to bringing them to fruition as well. That means you're a busy man because I believe you're what's called the managing editor is that right? That's the official title yeah but it could mean uh, many different things but uh, yeah so I'm basically working with the authors on getting the books from from the manuscript stage to the print stage and uh, working with them around photography around printing around design uh, and coordinating all of that so uh, so yeah it's an exciting stage it's an exciting job and uh, yeah it's a pleasure to be working with um, books that have so much potential and uh, yeah and, and looking around at the table in front of us we have lovely books here from Henry Coyle a forgotten freedom fighter that's from Jerry Coyle on this day in Mayo as well that's a fantastic book where you get to look back in time Edwin absolutely and that's one of the books we would have brought out last year by Martin O'Mockin and I, I'd highly recommend it of course I would it's, it's one of our own but it's uh, it's a brilliant history of Mayo hotels 366 stories uh, from Mayo all related to one day of the year so it's a very accessible book you can dip in and out of it and uh, it's a really quality production as you can see as well well, we've made our way here to Oris Inishglora in Balmullet, where all the children's activities are taking place so we'll head to the library and see what's going on there well, I'm very excited to be here in Balmullet Library where I'm joined by Sarah Webb. You have a fantastic campaign at the moment to discover Irish children's book. Tell me a little bit about that. That's right. Um, I'm really passionate about bringing Irish children's books together with Irish children. And um, yeah, this is our poster here. And we're all about trying to publicise and highlight the brilliant Irish children's books out there. And as part of Mayo Day, I know lots of children have been coming and meeting you, Sarah, yeah. which is a great opportunity and we'll talk a bit more about yourself in just a minute but what have you been telling them? Uh, I've been really encouraging them and supporting them to read. The library is an incredible incredible resource for any local community and it's lovely seeing them and talking to them about what they love to read, they love comic books, they love history. And there is a Mayo connection in front yeah. of us here we have a beautiful book it's called The Weather Girls mm -hmm. uh, the illustration absolutely lovely as well tell me about the connection though to this area that this book has. Yeah, so I was watching a program a couple of years back called Great Irish Lighthouses and I heard the story of the Sweeney's, um, Ted and Maureen. Um, Ted was talking about his work in Blacksod Lighthouse, but he also mentioned his wife who did the weather reports for D-Day. And I immediately was really taken with this because I hadn't heard this story before. So I looked it up and I became um, really, really fascinated by the story. and. Um, while reading about it and thinking about it, I thought, gosh, this is a story I would love to share with young readers. Mm. Um, so I start, started creating a story. Now, because Maureen only found out what a remarkable thing she did 
10 years after <laughs> in the 1950s I had to kind of change the story a little so I have a young family living in the lighthouse but it's very much inspired by the true story of Maureen Sweeney and Blacksod Lighthouse. And this is just out recently? Yeah, yeah, so it's called The Weather Girls and it literally came out last week. So, and I'm delighted to be doing a tour of some of the Mayo libraries to talk to school children about Maureen's story and, and the book. Yeah, and it's, it's lovely that the children get to know about it as well. Yeah, yeah, so I, uh, at the back of the book, I have a whole section on history, um, which Fergus Sweeney very kindly helped me with as well. And there's a lovely picture of Maureen lovely and photo, Ted. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so I'm hoping also that children will get a little bit of insight into Mayo at the time in the 1940s. There was an array of activities for children to enjoy as part of the Mayo Day celebrations. We paid a visit to the sensory bus on its first visit to Belmullet. Ray, tell me all about the Sensory Express and the Sensory Bus. Well, this is his first time in, at the Mayo Day, but it's um, it's a three-year-old concept now at the moment, and it's the first of its kind in uh, in Ireland. So we've sort of led the, the field with that one, and hopefully we'll have more going into the future. And who is this bus for? It's especially for children with, you know, special needs or additional needs and uh, especially ASD we tend to focus on children with autism okay and inside the bus then it's developed I suppose there's probably um, things to touch is there or things to go through or how does that work there's a little bit for everybody there's um, there's a ve very it's a very visual experience there are you know bubble tubes there's water there's eye tracking devices there's vibration there's um there's also distracting stuff like children regulate in different ways and we have a little dance floor that changes colour and it tends to distract them and, and help them to calm down you know it's a little bit for everybody and what's the reaction like today well the reaction as you can see is great Tommy there you go look what do you think of that long queues here <laughs> it looks like we won't be getting out of here tonight might have to book a hotel in Ballina or Bell Mullet or Bell Mullet if there is one free <laughs> <laughs> great stuff Well, we've made our way to the food tent here in Balmullet at Mayo Day. No better place than O'Hara's of Foxford. There's a group of them in Chicago as well. Who's over there from O'Hara's? Kate and Julie's in, Ohio in Chicago, and we'd like to say hi to them today. And we're doing our best in Balmullet and up Mayo. So we'll head over and see who's cooking up a storm now here in the food tent. Ladies first to Laura, I know you're looking forward to uh, being here today and uh, what are you cooking up this afternoon in Balmullet? Well, let it be known I'm ambitious anyway Tom because I'm trying to do breakfast, lunch and dinner in an hour, so we're the light <laughs> The very best of luck, but the breakfast I suppose a good meal to start the day. Absolutely, so we're going to do an air, an air fryer granola with a strawberry compote and some Greek yogurt and then I'm going to do brown bread and soup for lunch and I'm going to try and fit in a fillet steak for dinner. Absolutely lovely. I'll have to stay here for that Absolutely. meal. But you mentioned the air fryer there. It's a phenomenon now, isn't it? It's amazing. John, you probably have no heat on the air fryer, but I am mad for the air fryer. Oh, I have a ham as well to throw into the other side of the air fryer. Is that a glazed ham? It is. Yeah. You'll have to stay, Tom. I'll have to stay. John, you're a local man here. What's it like to work with produce in Mayo? Ah, it's fantastic. We've got like I mean, we've got pristine waters all around us. Uh, today, I'm using some locally reared lambs, actually reared on the Inniskay Islands. So, like, you don't need to use salt in them because they're you, the grass they eat out there and the heathers they eat out there. So, their 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 flesh is actually naturally salty. So, um, it's great to have that produce on our doorstep. You know, and the food tent here today is absolutely jammed. People really take an interest in cooking. Uh, cooking is huge and people they're scared they're, they think they're not able to cook and uh, cooking if they're shown it it can be so simple and uh, it's about making life easy and it's about like I mean our shops have gone so big now because there's so much processed foods and frozen foods and you know it's as easy to get a, a chicken fillet and make something nice out of it as it is to go in and get something that's processed and you know could have been made a few weeks ago and it's good for another few weeks Yes, 
Councillor Jerry Coyle, what a day in Balmullet. You're well used to having parties in Balmullet, but this is a special one. It's always a great day in Balmullet. It's just that you didn't know about it from outside here, you know. But I mean, sure, Fergus there could tell you, you know, it's always great times here. We live in the heart of the Wild Atlantic Way. This is it. It doesn't get any better than this. You take it all the way out to Black Sod, Carotag, up to Dahoma, you don't get any better. This is in a special place, a special people, and a special time. We're here with guys from Boxing Banjo just after their performance on the main stage at Mayo Day here in Balmullet. Joe, we'll come to you first year, uh, nearly here every year now for Mayo Day, but you always love coming back. I know, yeah, we were we played at Mayo Day last year in Balna, great success. Here today in Balmullet, absolutely flying again. Um, the crowds are coming in. I know, I know people that were struggling to get parking on the way into Balmullet today, so the energy is great around the place, the atmosphere is great. The music is great. There's loads of great bands playing here today. Loads of stalls. Yeah. Classic. And people from abroad and other countries, they've been coming up to you afterwards and they've enjoyed your music. Yeah, we had a couple of uh, French people coming up to us here at the end. We had another gentleman that was here in Iran. He said he saw us during the week on RTE and that he'd come along to see us play here again today. So it's great to see people coming to, that are interested in Irish music, Irish culture, celebrating everything they owe. Alan, you've just arrived here in Balmullet. Within five minutes, crowds coming up to you. What's it like to be a, a very special person in Mayo? Not at all. No, you're making that all up for the for the sake of the camera for entertainment purposes. But no, I'm definitely not a special per person at all. But it's uh, it's a great day, and I'm delighted to be here. I know though Mayo means a lot to you. I mean, you've showcased it throughout the years. It's beauty. You've got involved in so much throughout the county. So it does mean something to you. I know it certainly does. You know, I'm very passionate about Mayo, and I think when I started out on social media probably 2014 2015 I was probably one of the first people with a drone one of the first people to buy a drone in Harvey Norman and Castle Bar and take off around the county and show it from a different perspective so uh, I got to see areas that people wouldn't normally see and then got a great reaction to that and just drove me on to do more and more so I absolutely love me Usher how could you not Paul, tell me all about the Sloanch Care Healthy Communities and what you're promoting here today. Well, first of all, you know, it's such a great day to be here today. The atmosphere on the place is fantastic. Hundreds and hundreds of people, the place is buzzing. We're here as part of the Sloanch Care Healthy Communities team, which was a government investment in uh, the Eris and Ackle community, uh, only Eris and Ackle here in Mayo, to invest in health programmes. And this is ongoing, it's permanent. 500,000 every year to promote health programs. They're all free. So if you're a smoker and you want to give up smoking, we provide free NRT, which is the patches or the gums or the, the sprays, whatever works for you, that's free. We also provide uh, free nutrition programs, six week nutrition programs. We provide uh, parenting programs and a thing called social prescribing. So we just say you're lonely or you're a bit depressed or you're on your own and you're afraid to connect with people. We have a link worker who will meet with you and put you in touch with somebody who, or with some group that you might be interested in. It could be arts, it could be a choir, it could be physical activity, it could be something like that. Minister, great to have you in Balmullet. It's the 10th anniversary of Mayo Day. It's a fantastic concept. Absolutely. As somebody said to me, didn't it take some neck for us to have our own day? And I said, absolutely. We, we deserve our own day. We should celebrate everything that is good about Mayo. Um, and I think it's so cool. We are in Ballyhonus earlier, um, it's been celebrated all over the county, but this year the Chicago element really plays to our diaspora, who are so important, and without them we wouldn't be the county we are. And we have that huge connection with the US and indeed the UK as well, and all over the globe, and Mayo people have been quite successful wherever they've went. Absolutely, I had the pleasure of being in Argentina for St. Patrick's Day, where they celebrate as a national hero, Admiral William Brown from Foxford, uh, that went and established the uh, Argentinian Navy. And he's genuinely a hero over there. It's only when you go there you, you see the affection people have. And Mayo people are all over the world. And that's what the great thing about Chicago. But look at the great crowd here today, sampling the best of everything yeah. that Ben Mullet and Iris has to offer. whole Eris region is much the same. Everybody knows everyone and everyone tries to help each other on that. And uh, it's great community spirit really. And it's very important to have that. You know, we have so many volunteers in, in the whole Eris area. Even here today now, you know, we have over 100 volunteers helping out here today. So that's brilliant to have that. Only for that, you know, it would be very difficult to organise these events. But we're so used to organising events here in Belmullet. Take it the festival and the Heritage Day and Law and Law with the 15th August. You know, 
know, so oh, this is happening on an ongoing basis here in Belmont, and we're lucky to have such a core people of volunteers there to support us in anything we do. We're going to have a proper challenge in a second, but let's keep the music going first. Jess is going to sing one for you. Here we go. Let's see you singing along now. Rob, you're just off stage here on the main stage at Mayo Day. Great performance. Yeah, thanks very much. Yeah, unbelievable, unbelievable buzz here today. Just so much fun, great crowd. Yeah, we had a great time. You're kept busy. Oh, we're flat out, yeah, we're flat out. Writing, recording, playing, the whole lot, yeah. yeah. I mean, your Uncle Twig, the, the single he brought out, doing very, very well. Lots of radio play as well. Yeah, yeah, people seem to enjoy it. I mean, just a bit of crack, you know, you have to be making, have to be making noise, that's the main thing. Hockey Berlin, here's what we thought last summer. I wish I had someone to talk to. I'm in a no way. I think Mayo Day is a very special day. It's unique in to Mayo, it's unique in the Irish calendar, and I think it embodies everything that is good about Mayo, um, the spirit of Mayo, and I think the connectivity uh, that Mayo people have, no matter where in the world they are. And we're meeting people from right across the country today. They love to come home to Mayo as well, but there's something about the tourism offering as well in this county. Well, I think Mayo has it all, to be quite honest with you. Um, it has lovely towns and villages, it has fantastic people, it has probably some of the best scenery in, in the country. Um, and I think, you know, we do a lot of work to encourage people uh, to come to Mayo. Obviously anyone from Mayo and, and, and that has connections already know what it has to offer. So we try to ensure that other people hear about that. And I think there is a lot of success. Obviously the Wild Atlantic Way is also on its 10th anniversary, yeah. like, like Mayo Day. So I think, you know, the numbers have, have come up, but there's more work to be done. And I think we can um, increase the num numbers of tours coming to Mayo once we kind of get the message yeah, out. And I suppose we're very lucky to have Ireland West Airport knock on our doorstep and great public transport. Uh, so that all, all helps. Uh, just finally, I suppose there's other counties who would love to take this template probably and uh, make a day for their own county as well. I know from talking to my colleagues, you know, that they look at Envy, uh, with Envy at uh, Mayo Day, but I don't think that anyone can replicate it. I think it, it was a, a, a very good initiative, um, and I think Mayo Day has a certain ring to it, and I don't think it'll be replicated in any way to the same extent as the success that uh, Mayo has, has led on. As Mayo Day was drawing to a close, there was one final spectacle to enjoy a light parade organised by Bell Mullet 200 as a flagship event for the town's bicentenary celebrations. Here's some of the highlights. That's all we have time for on this evening's programme. Don't forget TV Ireland will bring you all of the highlights of Mayo Day's 10th anniversary celebrations from Gaelic Park in Chicago. So do look out for that in the coming weeks. Martin Logan is on the way next with stories from the Irish in the UK. But until next week, Slonga Foles.